<laughs> Welcome to Burning in Hell. Okay, guys, this is a very special episode of Burning in Hell because I've covered a lot of fucked up shit. I've talked to a lot of fucked up people <laughs> and <laughs> we have never covered fertility infertility we've never touched it not even not even a tip not even not even the just tip. tip just, not the, even tip. just the tip <laughs> so this is gonna be so fucking insightful and i couldn't pick a better person to do it we're with casey balsham Woo! i'm obsessed with this comic she's so fucking funny the second i met you i was like i'm like you inspire me everything about you oh. and you're a light you also we have like girls got to eat is obsessed with her so i'm like okay they have incredible taste no pun intended um <laughs> she has a podcast shady shit we yes. love we love a curse in the title mm -hmm. she's an album out son of a barb mm -hmm. which is hilarious mm -hmm. um she says she bombs in group texts I, I love that for you. I do. I'm terrible in group texts. I, I literally can only say ha 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 because I fuck. Are you like in your head about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm always the one that sends the something and then the conversation stops. And I was like, oh, well, meanwhile, my husband, this was literally in our vows. I was like, uh, he like, he is the king of like every group text is he, like Robbie. Every single time he writes something, there's like five responses. of ha, 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 Like he kills in group texts and it's infuriating. And he's it's not a terrible. comic. Is No, he no, is a comic. a comic. He's okay. Yeah. Comic, and it's infuriating. You know what? He must have a certain style or aesthetic. Yeah. But it's funny with group texts. You're actually useful for group texts because people don't want an ongoing group text. People should hire you <laughs> to end the group text because I'm the sick of these fucking bachelorette group text notifications about nothing. I'll be the group text cooler. Yeah. I'm like, you need me to come cool in and off. cool down the table? Cool it off. I just come in with something fucking stupid and they're it's, like, all right, this is done. But you know what's funny? I decided to come a, become a comic low key because I was like, I'm like... I'm pretty funny in group texts. <laughs> it's inspiration strikes when where you least expect it, you know? We're, but you're right. Some group texts maybe just have bad energy for you. I think you just haven't found the you haven't found the right group. Maybe. Yeah, I need people that get me, you know. But I love that you stick to who you are and you don't change for the group text. I can't. I wouldn't even know how. And you have a <laughs> you have a very exciting event coming up I in your life. Do. Can you explain how like the project you're working on and yes. the path it's been? Yes. I um and also by the way, I love you too. I, I love, love I I love I've loved working with you when we were at Gotham and everything like that. And so it's very fun to be here. Thank you, babe. Um uh, I'm doing so I wrote uh struggling with infertility I have been for almost five years now, which is fucking insane. But I started telling jokes about it as a way to kind of cope with it. And then that became like a really nice quarantine project to be like, hey, I don't think anybody has spoken about this uh, with a funny tinge to it. Because like I was saying before, I feel like infertility is is just tackled so sad and it's like a very hopeless place. Like when you go on the internet and everyone's like, you have to eat this and you can't do this. And you're just like, it's very hard to navigate your way through. So I started telling jokes about it because I needed to process it. And then that became this project of this kind of one woman show. Mainly, it's mainly comedy. Like I'm trying, like there's definitely parts where I talk from my heart, but it's supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. um, and I made this show called Inconceivable. What a good title. It's, uh, and I, I I love it. I love it. Did you it. hit, did the title come to you immediately? The title was first. Yes. The I title love when that was happened. first. And yeah. then I was like, I got, I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I've got, I was like, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And everyone was like, absolutely. There's nobody, nobody tackling infertility funny. Like it's starting to be talked about like the mm -hmm. tip of the iceberg. Like even on like, I think sex in the city, there was a character going through IVF, but mm -hmm. all they do is say going through IVF. Like they don't actually get into fucking the ins no. and outs of it. And so I wrote this uh, show and I've been doing the jokes on stage and I'm bringing it to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival for the first time. You guys don't know it's in Scotland. I'm so excited. And you yeah, you're your going mind. overseas, bitch. You're taking this international. I'm taking this, yeah, across across state lines. This we're really doing it. We're really, we're really doing it. Have you been to it. Scotland before? I've been to Edinburgh and it's beautiful and it's <gasps> magical. And I can't wait to see it just filled with with crazy drunk people. I think it's going to be so fun. And I've told that you literally lose your mind because you do the you do your hour every day for a month. Mm -hmm. At the same time, at the same venue. So you like literally I ran into a comic who I'd never met before, but he was uh, he's done fringe and he's like, bring medication. And I was like, awesome. Cool. 
And you're leaving like very soon. <laughs> I for leave it. on July 31st. So I leave two weeks in, well, yeah, a week from Sunday. And you also said you have some exciting news on the fertility front. I do. So the crazy part about is that I'm doing this show. Meanwhile, I am actually transferring one of our embryos on Monday, the 25th. So. And after you transfer an embryo, you wait two weeks to see if you're pregnant. So I will actually be taking my pregnancy test while I'm in Scotland doing this show. So it's Holy really shit. like a real time. I know. And I told my doctor, I was like, I just don't want to wait. And he's like, don't wait then. I was like, he's like, you can find a place over there to draw your blood. I have chills. You can take a I look test. at my chills. <laughs> I literally have chills. I'm like <laughs> freaking out about this. Well, it's because this is the thing with comedy. I feel like you'll get inspiration and you'll yeah. think of these great jokes yeah. and everyone loves them. And then like a year later, you're still doing them, but you don't love them anymore. Cause like your life has evolved. You've yep. changed. You are living your truth right now. And I'm in it. And you are so fucking like legs out. Mention it all. I'm in it. About yeah. your life. But I do have to explain to you. Yes. I am a dumb dumb when it comes to fertility. Dude, we're all I we're don't not set know, up for it. I don't know anything Listen, about it. It's not your fault. I've never had to. Nope. My mom popped me and my brother out. <laughs> she she just explains it took a couple hours. She brags that she didn't have a take any drugs. So now I feel like a pussy ass bitch if I yep. take a drug. Yep. Um, and that's literally all I know. Cause here's the thing. It's it's really and I touch on this a little bit in the show because I'm like Truly and honestly, they do not set us up for this. As women, they throw a, a they throw a fucking Cosmo magazine at us, and all that oh, teaches Lord. us is how to like tie a silk scarf, how to give a, a, a it's a all blowjob, pretty bad like, hand job. What is <laughs> what is happening with my how eggs? to giggle to make him like you? I, I know how to make your fart smell better, and you're just like <laughs> what? This is unusual so information. So toxic. <laughs> so toxic. It's truly, but that's but they don't they don't set us up. It's not like it, it's not like somebody says, hey, at 20 at 30 years old if you're not with a prospect and you think you want kids go to a doctor and just go fuck just go go have them poke around go see what the eggs are like go see what the hormones are like just go check things out because you don't know and then when you start trying to have a baby you don't know what like there's so many things inside of our bodies you could have like polyps or fibroids you could have a septum like there's so many little things um and you could be also totally fine you could just get drunk yeah. in, in vegas and and fuck and, and get pregnant like no problem you're making but me feel a lot of emotions like there's a lot of emotions and i'm getting i'm getting it. like a severe like i want to punch a wall like an angry white dude who just lost a football game because you don't know about this because they don't tell us because like i feel like every girl at a certain age mm -hmm. should know that it's okay to go and just check your situation they won't tell you they won't they won't do it for you, you have to ask for it but but it's so crazy because for example i know friends who their whole life, they think they're pregnant every month. They're afraid ah, of getting pregnant. Yes. And then at like 32, they realize like, oh, I actually can't get pregnant. Yeah. Or like, oh, my husband doesn't have whatever. Yep. I don't know how to say it. But it's like, we should know early on how to prepare for what is inevitable mm -hmm. with our bodies. But it's like the second you decide I want a baby, then all this reality hits you. It's really, it's truly crazy because you do, you spend most of the time trying to, prevent pregnancy because like so fucking scared like, so hard. but that's also that's also been ingrained in us it's like the minute we grow tits people are like don't get pregnant yeah. do you want to do anything else yeah. with your life you can't if you're pregnant yeah, if so you we, deep throat you could get pregnant it's tru <laughs> like truly and honestly yeah i mean i don't i don't know if you guys you remember this from like when you guys had sex ed when you were younger but that was a question that came up constantly it was like can you get pregnant from sucking a dick it's like mm -hmm. all there was just it was like pregnancy and then we're panic. all thrown on birth control and i don't think i At personally 15. i was not educated about the kinds of birth control to this day um, what's the thing that they stick up in you? The IUD. The IUD. Mm -hmm. there, see, there's too many acronyms too. Like I'm not, I can't deal with it. It's codes. It's codes that we codes. have not been we informed of. We cannot crack them. And there my, is no I'm formula. I'm so bad with my birth control. Like mm. I'm so chaotic. Yeah. I'll take like, I'll miss a couple days. I'll take five pills. Just like hope it works. And I, my mom was like, have you, what about like an IUD? And I'm like, I'm scared of that. I don't know what it is. My one friend told me like, it was the most pain she's ever gone through. I don't even know how I'd go about getting it. And then I just don't. And that's like, I, know. I think I'm a good average girl who like doesn't like to do a lot of admin on yep. my body <laughs> and like, it's just, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I get it. So what, when you were growing up, did you want to be a mom? 
since I was like 10. Oh my God, Kylie Jenner. I Look at you. Thank you. Uh, we very much resemble each other as well. She's also 40. Um, <laughs> she looks like she's 40. She also looks like she's 40. Um, I, no, truly and honestly, when, when I, I was playing like naming kids games. I was constantly making lists of names that I love. Like I was naming my children since I was, I, and because I was never somebody that thought about the wedding. Mm -hmm. I never thought about the husband. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that that was, like I, I knew that that was part of it, but I mainly was just like, I'm going to, I want kids. Like I, I played Barbies till I was 18. Like mm -hmm. I was very into being in control of other people. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who can I tell what to do? Yeah, you I'm guys. not a comic yeah. and you're like, laugh, bitches. Exactly. It's all an or Wow. 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 It's all an orchestration. It's all I've coming together. I've been a together. puppet master my whole life. But, but yeah, yeah, you you, you want to like influence and inspire and like help someone grow. Yeah. So have you ever had any pregnancy scares when you were younger? Uh, the thing is that I thought I did. Yeah. But now where I'm at... Like sometimes I wonder because we've been trying since I was like 36 and, and after 35 is really when you, it goes rapid. So like at, between 30 and 35, there's still a little bit of a room to play with, but you should still kind of know. But after 35, it's, it's there, it's, it, it, we're rolling downhill. We're, what do you mean by rapid? You mean like, like the, the, the eggs, eggs are, the, are killing them? The eggs, the egg, the quality and the numbers drop drastically at 35. It's so funny because our bodies and our, um, generation are so like the body still thinks like she's not capable she's gonna die at 45 she can't raise these children i'm like can we change it's, something it's also it's to so modern much. society especially because yeah women are wait waiting longer and i don't know if this is people were doing it back in the day you know people had issues mm -hmm. but i think people were just having children younger i think that yeah. it was just kind of like the norm back in the day was like oh you get married at 23 mm -hmm. 26 so you have kids all that stuff mm -hmm. um and i'm like man when i was 23 there was if there were no prospects and also like making me a mother at 23 are you kidding me like yeah. me, we would both be and i feel terrible <laughs> Nothing would be good right now for me or that kid. It's like, I, I feel at 40 now that I'm like, I get it. Like, and I've done shit with my life and it's, I'm ready for this second chapter, but like, my God, and, and not, I'm not, you know, I have a lot of friends that had kids in their twenties, but mm -hmm. it's just wild to think about that. That they're is, child brides. It's so, it's so normal. And I look at pictures of myself when I was 23, I'm like, I have baby fat, man. Like my <laughs> eyebrows are fucked up. Like I look, I don't look like a mud. Like I just, I'm like, who would have given me a, like I wouldn't have given me a baby at that no. time. Like I get why things, but so, and also, I do feel like whatever the universe throws at you, like we will find a way to deal with it. But there's so many women who, you know, they'll be 26 and single mm -hmm. and they're stressing already about their timeline. Go on The and, Bachelor. Have fun. Don't, you know, don't but stress. like, but it's hard to be like, <laughs> don't worry about it because then they're like, OK, I'm not going to meet someone, let's say, for two years. And I mm -hmm. meet someone and then if they're the wrong person, I'm with them for five years and we break up. Then yeah. I'm single at 32. Like I you know. could think yourself into crazy shit. And it's all because of the timeline of her eggs. I know. That's why it's like, just go get them out. And I, and I, and I say this from a, a point knowing that that's not that cheap and not a lot of insurances take it or not a lot of insurances cover it. But if it's something in your life that you know, you want explore just taking the eggs out when you're younger. And you're, what does that entail? Working. Taking the eggs out. So, um, so, so taking, doing an egg retrieval process. So you have to go through, um, the process that I went through is they basically, They'll put you on kind of like, I, I've been to two different clinics who had different kind of approaches. There's kind of more of an old school and there's kind of like a, a more modern approach, which mm. is what I'm doing now, which my body's responding to more. But basically you get put on like, um, they go, you have to go by your natural cycle. So when you decide, okay, I'm going to do this. Then there is an insane wow! thunderstorm happening, but I'm kind of obsessed with the drama of this moment. I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, then that you go the to the doctor. <laughs> 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 um, and the humidity broke, Jesus. I know, geez. Um, so they, you kind of go in the cycle. So you have to get your period and you have to kind of then, um, they, they, they track the natural phases. And so at a certain point during the phase, and I forget, it might be right after you ovulate or in between period and ovulation, you go, uh, on a birth control, like some will put you on like a harder one. I was on this other, uh, a really light one. So, cause they want essentially all the eggs to be at the same starting point. Cause your eggs, like they kind of during a cycle, there's some big and, you know, ultimately it's just the one that kind of is, is chosen and released 
to ovulate and that's where the sperm is supposed to meet. Mm -hmm. So they want to kind of take all of your eggs and allow you to kind of gather them up. So they kind of stop them. So they put you on the pill. This is, I'm making a gate with my hands because that's what my doctor did. <laughs> he made a gate. So in my head, it's just a gate. It's so a gate. The pill is a gate and like, all your eggs are just fucking like It's like, like the line to brunch at 12 o'clock on a Sunday in New York City. <laughs> yes. All at, the girlies are ready to you're go. You're at Jack's wife, Frida. You see the tables, <laughs> but you can't get to them. You're behind the fucking glass. So they do that. And then, um, and then essentially after that, you take, um, uh, two different types of hormones. One, the follistim, I think one of them is basically to kind of fatten them up. And one of them is to kind of get them all together mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that like see, see this is the thing is like i've done it's this four, shit i've it. done this four times and i still don't even really like know all the ins and outs mm -hmm. but you in you shoot needles with this hormones okay basically that's directly immediately that's stomach. when i'm like mm. it's not that bad it's a it's a diabetic needle okay and you can't really feel it one of the stuff one of the medications and i tell a whole joke about this because it's synthetic urine it burns and it's like because there's like a hormone, this guy back in Italy years ago found out that there was a hormone in older women's urine that could help younger women get pregnant. So he started like harvesting from these nuns because the older women couldn't be pregnant. So he was like, well, nuns don't get pregnant. So he started harvesting urine with with the Vatican's blessing. So the Pope was like, yeah, give the man his pit. Give the man the pee pee. Yeah. Like nuns give it to him. <laughs> so then he so then he was injecting its urine and it was working. So but then it just became unsustainable. He needed like thirty thousand liters of urine a day from yeah. nuns. And yeah. so they just found a way to make it synthetic. Yeah. So we So still, when you say it's burning, it burns your insides? It just kind of like burns when it goes in. Okay. Like this is okay, this is I'm an trying, argument I just had with yeah. Robbie. I thought it was pretty well known that like pee burns. But like and my friend was like, Yeah, yeah, of course. And I'm like, was I just peeing on my feet a lot as a child and my feet were cut kind up? Of, like, how do I know that urine burns? Like, this is what I'm good. And I, I thought this was a very normal thing. And then every time I tell people, I'm like, you know how urine burns? Everyone's like, What? <laughs> like, what are you talking like, about? You like, have an STD, sir. I'm like, I'm like, you know, when you like you pee on a cut and people are like, Why are you peeing on cuts? And I'm like, I don't know, but there's something you in go, my life. Don't yuck someone's yum. I <laughs> Truly, I was like, I don't know why I know this, but I know that urine burns. So when you inject it, it burns. So you you shoot the things and then you basically they fill up your ovaries with eggs. So each side and you go into the doctors every day and they check and they every make day. Sure one one guy had me coming every day. Another guy had to come in every couple of days, but right towards the end when it's like, it's a timing thing. So it's like the eggs have to be right at the right time because you don't want them to over mature because then you can't use them. So they, so you want them all growing at the same time. And so you I'm go just thinking in. logistically yeah. about this. Yeah. Most people have a full-time job during all this. Oh, this is, so here's the thing. You're going in at like 7 and 8 a.m. You're going in at 7 and 8 a.m. and you're doing this. You're for your future unborn child. Your you're future like, unborn, like, okay, we're waking up. This, when I get a kid, they I, the night the bedtime story will be the fucking <laughs> journey and the gauntlet that I went through to make them. And then if they think that I'm they are going to college, they're not. They will live with me. I'm breastfeeding my child till they're 13. <laughs> I this kid is with me forever. Um, but so you so so yeah, so then so basically then you're bloated because your ovaries are fucking gigantic. Yeah. You're cramping. You're just you're uncomfortable, but it's not, it's only for like the span of like nine to ten days. Okay. And then they like there's a certain time where he says, okay, we need to trigger because, oh, and then you start taking something that will stop you from ovulating. So once the eggs start looking, looking good, then they like, we don't want you to lose them. You're not, you, we don't want you to ovulate. So then you have to add another shot so that you're not ovulating. And I also took this stuff called Omnitrope, which kind of, I think helps the quality. So I was taking like four shots at, at certain nights. I was taking four shots. And what's your husband doing during all this? Watching TV. Yep. Sometimes I would, <laughs> sometimes I would make him watch me. Sometimes he'd be like, stand here. Stand here and watch do me do like this. Get a, a wax your vagina and during it, you're just like, fuck you, Brendan. Or like whoever the guy you're, oh, is yeah. you're seeing. Oh, yeah. Like you just channel all the pain towards them. I actually channel mine towards both of my parents who are extremely hairy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, fuck you, Barb and Jim. This isn't supposed to grow on my asshole like this. I'm a lady. <laughs> but but um, Robbie must like he must because it's not their fault that they're no. the ones. So like how does he feel emotionally during all this? He he goes in in and out. So like, because by design, I'm feeling most of it because I'm physically doing it. I have to sometimes remind him like, this is hard. Yeah. Like, but, but I, I, but 
I don't think, I think it's just because you don't like, men's whole portion of this is to come in a cup <laughs> in a bathroom at a doctor's office. Do you know what I mean? Like, like they so literally have a pleasurable experience. It, it, it's truly like, like I'm like crying and sweating, running into traffic and he's like, just in the cup. <laughs> It's right in the cup here. This is where I come. And you're also, like, whenever yes. you say the word hormones, I get scared. Yeah. Because you're, you know, people call hormonal a thing. And, yeah. and I just envision myself like just going berserk. Yeah. It's kind of like I really only, and Robbie's even said, and some other people that I've been around have been like, you're doing pretty good with it. Like I definitely internally am feeling some turmoil and mm -hmm. I've de I definitely will snap at Robbie. Like I do remember one time, when we were doing our first transfer last summer, where you're on a whole other cocktail of hormones because then you're getting your body prepped for to, to hold an embryo. And I remember I was like, doing good, doing good. And he's like, you're doing really good. You're doing really good with this thing. Because that's two weeks when you're waiting and you're just like taking so many drugs. And then at one point towards the end, I just remember something set me off. And he was like in the shower. And I like peeled back the shower curtain. I was like, ah! Like, we're doing this now. And he was like, he couldn't say anything because it wasn't me, you know? And I was just like screaming at him while he was like in the shit, just in there, just like, like psycho. Like I just pulled the thing back and was like, yeah. like he, like he watched my head spin and fire. And it was just like, and I was like, here it is. And he just had to look at me and kind of be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Like, what just happened? And I also want to preface, I, like, I hate when people say women are, like, emotional because I think men are emotional just in totally different ways, such right. as, like, anger and stuff. Yeah. But it's yeah. more like we're navigating insane things that we're not in control of, but somehow we still manage to run shit. It's like, it It truly, I just did this podcast and um, and the whole theme was, like, powerful women. And she's like, who is powerful to you? And I was like, all women in general, like anybody that sees what's going on in the fucking world right now, anybody that is dealing with any kind of anything like this, infertility, or have just given birth and the fact that we do all this and then we wake up in the morning and we go to our stupid little jobs and we tell our dumb little jokes. And we, and, yeah, and we laugh at and the we laugh boss's and, bad jokes and, and we, we give just, exclamation marks on every fucking email to make sure everyone's okay. Yeah, truly not. Like everything about what, what we go through on a daily basis is so crazy. And I also I just, think we suffer I, in silence so much. I can't believe we wake up in the morning. <laughs> I can't believe I, get up, I got out of bed today. I can't believe we eat, we eat anything other than bagels. With all the, I mean, <laughs> speak for yourself. With all the, with all the abortions, shmorshin stuff going on. I had no, I had a crazy moment. I was in actually LA when it all went down. And this man was actually, he was yelling. He was like, honk, if you've had an abortion. Like there was this like rally going on. Yeah. And the whole highway starts blowing up with honking. And I was shook and I was like, we go through so much mm -hmm. in silence. Cause it's not like, it's even like when you go to your job, the average job, there's not tampons in, you know, the the yeah. closet. There's, it's not like a woman's no, world. I had like, to fight for that at a job I worked at to buy tampons for a mainly female office. Wow. And they and and it was our customer care had to work 24 hours a day. And so they were there in the middle of the night and they were there on the weekends. And he's like, I don't want it to be a thing where then we're just buying them for that. I go, we need to, and they didn't have trash cans in the women's bathroom either. I go, we need trash cans in the women's bathroom and I need fucking tampons under there for those girls. Yeah, well, we're in stand up and imagine if it was like 50-50 men, women, how different the green rooms would be. I mean. People don't understand, like this, this, um, studio we're in right now is yeah. run by a woman and a man and you right. can tell like there are details <laughs> <laughs> but like every green room I'm in touring the country mm -hmm. it looks like horrible things have happened in it, a it closet it looks like an incel's basement <laughs> I'm like, why is the brick? There's not even a mirror. It, no. Not even I had to mirror. fight for that at a job I'm working at too now. It's like an on-camera thing. I was like, I need a mirror. If I'm going to be putting clipping things and putting microphones, I was like, I need I need a mirror. Like no and one has even thought if a woman was in this position, would she not want a, a mirror? Would she not want, yeah, like a tampon around or l like a, a good light? I don't know. Like maybe not a rat in the corner. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe a candle. Is it crazy to ask? <laughs> for a vanilla scented candle um no it, it threw I, I love the being involved in male spaces yeah. and being like oh, wow they think women don't exist it's, like at all it's or that we're gonna just thing. change everything for their situation but that's why I love 
your fucking voice. Like what you're doing is so powerful right now because what you're doing with your show is similar to what I love about Burning in Hell. I call it a comedy mental health podcast. Yeah. Because it's like people are more apt to listen to these things when I'm like, it's my comedy podcast. Yeah. And people have come in and joked about every fucked up thing here. We have to. We have to. How do you live? How do you live every day? Like you said, suffering in silence. And that's why I started talking about it because I also needed an out for myself. That if I was like out and about and I was with people and like I just wasn't feeling it or I was just felt like not talking, I could be like, I'm on hormones. Like I needed, I needed, I needed to not pretend like I wasn't going through this because I was like, I'm affected by this. I'm exhausted. My body is fat. My ovaries are tripling in size I've got 29 goddamn eggs just bouncing around in there like I'm tired I've had I was on you know like I uh, you get put under when you do the egg retrieval and I've gone on stage the next night and I'm like what am I like it's just it's it's, it's I had to talk about it so that I could be weird. I was thinking <laughs> I was like, be like, this is what's going on with me, man. So yeah. don't question me. But I was even thinking about you going on stage every night. Like if I go on stage and like I think I might have to pee, I like mm. I I'm like, oh I'm not or like if I'm like a little bit I have a phobia of being on stage doing an hour and being hungry. So like, <laughs> like I do not want to be hungry on stage. Oh my so, god. So like these are little things like when you're on stage, you want to feel good. So the fact you that you're comfortable. At, yeah, at least the minimally you comfortable, comfortable with your your body. That's another thing that nobody tells you. Like when there's there's certain medications that you have to stick in your vagina and you leak. Mm. And like being on stage thinking like, you, you know, you know, when you can feel an egg drop or you can feel your period, you, you know, come. When you feel a leak. Yep. You know, when you're like a snail trip, like yep. I felt that leak and you're <laughs> on stage and I'm always worried that like halfway through my set, they're just going to be a big wet spot on my crotch that is just literally <laughs> eye level to everybody. <laughs> Like eye level to everybody. Cause like this is, it's such a leaky process. Like there's so many things. And you you're have to so stick vulnerable on stage. Like you literally are standing there with a light right on you. On and your, you. your labia lips are like in, L- in perfect eye line. They're li- people are literally the, yeah, looking at your vagina the whole time. I'm like, and I'll feel like a drop and I'll be like, God, God damn it. Mm-hmm. And then you're on stage and I'm like, I got seven more minutes or I got whatever, 25 more minutes to talk and I feel like I got a drop. And let's like, be it's honest. Just, you have to think about You're all being these funny and it's very hard sometimes. Imagine like at a bad, if you're in a bad mood at work, yeah. you can be in a bad mood like in a typical nine to five and like yeah. do your emails. You have to go from bad mood to literally making people laugh I know. when you're not laughing inside. I know. I know. There's been times when I, the first the first transfer again, I was on so many meds that I was so tired that I was literally like waking up from sleep, going and doing a show and then coming. Like I was just like, it was like fully, like I wasn't even there. Like I was so tired. So how, crazy. how long did it take you to go from, wait, this is really upsetting to let's laugh about it. Cause I know sometimes with comics with writing like something bad will happen to you and you'll be like you know what I don't really want to touch this subject Uh, yeah I know that feeling as well um I again like I was as I was going through the process you know I I I hadn't fully checked in with it it's such a weird thing like I'm physically giving myself shots I'm physically feeling uncomfortable I'm sitting at the doctor's office I'm getting I mean I have a blood I have a bruise Mm -hmm. right here getting blood blood drawn so much but I still didn't feel like it was happening to me Like, I still felt like I was outside of this. Like, Mm. I was like, there's no fucking way that this is me, even though it was, like, physically myself. Well, also, because the stereotype in your head wasn't you of, like, the woman. My period was the most basic. Like, my period was so normal. My period was the most regular. It was reliable. Like, I have, like, so I. Is there a correlation? Well, generally, you know, when you ovulate and it's not met, your lining thickens because it's getting ready to like meet and and prepare for uh, for egg and sperm to meet and Im- implant. And when it doesn't happen, that's your period. So getting your period c- kind of normally every month meant that I thought my my cycle was normal. I was yes. ovulating regularly and doing all this stuff. And so it really I didn't. There was nothing. There in no the warning cards. signs. No warning signs. And then um, and then yeah. And so I'm going through it, being like, surely this is just all up. A fluke like sure surely I'll just well we can just keep having sex and I'll keep uh, sh- this is not so you were like I'm just happening. being you know this is not proactive yeah. and, and also I don't even know infertility also is like it's 50 50 so it could be Robbie's it's it's Robbie's sperm as well they don't swim they have morphology issues like there's so many things and then I think me it's my quality just because I'm 
older and I mm-hmm. have did smoked many Newports in my life. Um, <laughs> Were and, you a smoker? Oh my God. I love, I still love smoking. I Do you love, smoke now? No, I can't. Do you jewel? No, I, no, 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 I can't because it really, it like smoking Don't touch your jewel. Affects Do not touch that fucking no, People I are but I literally love smoking cigs to quit them, jeweling. I, love, I, love them. I know. When did you start uh, smoking? Oh, when I was 12. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I was still playing Barbies, just smoking cigs. I was a wreck. I was a wreck. Other people were like drawing on it. You're just like burning your cig oh on the, oh, the Barbie I love. <laughs> I fucking, a hot cigarette, give it to me. I, I dream about it. Like, cause you know, also when we travel, like Robbie will smoke in Europe and it's just like, it's just different. Like yeah. we just, I, I still love cigarettes and I cannot touch them. Are you a drinker? I love drinking. I love all the things that are bad for you. Yeah. Cocaine phase, like name it. I did it. Yeah. Uh, except for acid. You're fun. I'm, I'm, I'm fun. Thank you. She's a good time gal. <laughs> she Listen, is a good time. I lived in Hawaii for a couple of years. You get very bored. You just drink and I need a lot you of for drugs. like 10 hours. <laughs> like you just unlock so many, like I love asking questions to people and my mind is going a mile a minute right now. <laughs> I was like, I did but so much crazy shit. To complete that. So if, if you're getting your eggs frozen, oh, yes, yes, how yes. long does it oh, take? Yeah, 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 and yeah. how many times did you oh, do and, it? And then when I, when I, when I wanted to start talking about it, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, this is me. I go off on. No, I'm all over the place, but I'm getting the girlies all the information okay, they need. Okay. So to wait, let me finish up. The, the first one was when did I want to start talking about it? And it was because I needed a way to clue into myself. That's why I started telling jokes about it. Mm. That's what happened is I was like, oh, let me see if I can tell a couple of these IVF jokes. And they were resonating and it made me check in with the fact that I was going through it. Because I was so like, it was helping if I have to write bring about to it, reality. I have to re- recognize that I'm going through it. Yes. yes. So that was that. And then, okay. So for the egg retrieval, so you fatten up your eggs, you take all these shots, then you, you, you stop yourself from ovulating. And then when the eggs are ready, the doctor will say, you're going to trigger tonight. And it's a very timely thing. So you take an HCG shot that it tells your body you can ovulate. So then you trigger and the trigger has to happen. It's like 10 PM exact. Like I literally was in bathrooms at Gotham being like tick, 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 tick. And at 10 PM exactly, because then the egg retrieval has to be exactly 36 hours after. So you have to trigger exactly at a certain time. And then you go in like, yeah, like 36 hours later. So you trigger at 10 PM, you wait, you go in the next day and then they, uh, put you under which is, the, that's my, literally, that's a reason to do an egg retrieval. Like, cause I, I'll, I'll talk to my anesthesiologist. I'm like, listen, I haven't like drank or done anything in like days. So can you, cause I don't, I tend to not like drink or do anything when you're going through this cycle. Yeah. Like, Let me just, you know, I want to give myself the best chance. And so I, I tend to eliminate a lot of stuff. Um, so I'm like, let me down slowly, you know, like, let me have a little bit of a ride. So, so, so they'll give me like a good 30 <laughs> seconds being high before I go under. <laughs> And then, and then they literally, they, 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 they take it and they suction all the eggs out of your, so it's, it's a crazy feeling. Yeah, where and do they go in? Through your, through your, through your hole. Yeah. Through, up your, your, up your yeah. thing, getting up to your things. Yeah. And then it is like, I've watched like YouTube videos. It's like a small tube, I think. And they kind of suck, suck the eggs out. So if you have a lot, like it's obviously it becomes like a, they're kind of sc- I hate the word scraping, yeah. but they're kind of getting yeah. your insides out. And so it's you're, stuck on the wall. It's just, they're just, they're just kind of, I don't know if, if they're stuck or whatever, but mm-hmm. when you have more, you're ovaries, chilling. You're obviously like, you're <laughs> they're ovaries, vibing. They're, they're, ha- they're partying. Yeah, they're, 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 <laughs> they're mixing. It's a mixer. They're raging. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's like your apartment had a mixer and everyone's like, oh, I don't know what's happening. They're they're like, ra- and it's like, it's, t- it's 10 PM. We're going to, we're leaving. There's Everyone pizza leave. in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then they get kicked out. Yeah. It's a noise complaint. Yeah. But your ovaries are so big after that you have to be really careful not to do like certain kind of exercises because they don't want your ovaries to like jostle and twist because then that becomes the whole thing and you could have overstimulated ovaries and then that's a whole thing where you're like puking and you have a headache. So there's a lot also of- Also the control freak in me yeah. is getting anxiety you because- have to let it go. You have to let go because you can, it sounds like you can listen to everything they say and it still won't you work. You know. And that is a yeah. real sense of loss of control, I feel like. It really is because you don't know what's going on with you. There's so many things- that could have, like your body, you could be, you could have low ovarian reserve, which means that you, like my doctors told me he's taken one egg out of a lady. Like you could, I've talked to two women who at 38 were already in the throes of menopause. They did not know. They didn't know. So there's so many things. I had a septum. So it means my ovary was split at the top, which means that that's something that can, um, cause miscarriage. So then they have to fix that. Mm -hmm. I also had like a fibroid at one point that needed to be because otherwise the fibroid was right where the baby would have grown and it would have like 
it would have like poked. This and how the fuck would you know? This is they have to you have to poke around up there. Also, even yeah. just hormonally, now people are starting to check their hormones more. And I highly recommend it, even though I haven't done it. One of my friends, she just like couldn't lose weight and she was the healthiest person I knew. She like, had a thyroid thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so and she was like, Hannah, I had an eating disorder because I didn't understand why I couldn't lose weight. Yeah. And when she was able to realize like, oh, it's out of my control. She needed to, she needed to like regulate it. Exactly. Yeah. So like this, it's just, it's so hard, especially as women. Cause I feel like some of us will do everything right. And our bodies still will not respond. We have, you know, you have to, if it's, if that's, you have to seek medical advice at a mm -hmm. certain point, you know, like mm -hmm. if it's, if you are doing all these things, then it's clearly out of your control. Um, so, so they so they put you under. They take all the eggs out, and then um, if you're getting them frozen, I believe you can still test the quality of the eggs, and then they'll test them, and then they'll they'll cryo freeze them, and then essentially those are good. If you're getting embryos out, then they take the eggs out, and then they have to be which ones are mature. So some of them either if they're too small or they've gone over, they have to be mature, and then they put a sperm into each of the mature eggs, and then you see which ones fertilize, and then you wait until day three and you see if they're they have enough cells. So you want on day three you want between six and ten cells, and then on day five and six you want certain other things like little to no fragmentation. You want them to be like in this like sack, and you want the cells to be so they so then they grade them. So on day five or six they grade the embryos to be like this is what we think they are based based on like the fragmentation in the cell number and where they are in like this like kind of like sack thing for lack of a better word. And then once you have those embryos, any anybody who's made it past all that and at, and at every step they go down like at least half. Yeah. So like I started at one point with 29 eggs. You get 27 are mature, 24 fertilized. At day three, you have 15. At day six, you have nine. And then those nine go to testing to make sure that they have all the right chromosomes. And then you get, and then I had two come back. So it's like, it, it's just, it, and then it they drops see off. which ones actually. And then, and, then, and then the two are the good ones. Then those get refrozen. And then based on quality, you, you implant like the best quality one. So we have five frozen right now from two cycles. Cause I did two with another clinic and mm -hmm. I only got one embryo and it didn't stick. It, we put it in. What are the stick chances? <sighs> it, Based on age, it it changes. So like, I think if you're like below 30, I think you have a 60% chance of a live birth. If you're like between 20 and 30 or between 30 and 40, I think it's like, you know, 55. And then like after 40, it's like, you know, 40% chance of a live birth, which is fucking wild. And can you give me some numbers of what these things can cost? Yes. So it's a Egg retrieval can be about eighteen thousand dollars, somewhere between fifteen and eighteen. Yes, and then there's med and then the meds can be anywhere from five. My first clinic had me so drugged up. My first round of meds were twelve thousand dollars. Are they running this by you and giving you numbers, or just at the end they're like this that is, was they they, they show you they show you the but you're buying the drugs at other places. Yeah. Luckily, then after my first round of drugs, my my clinic saved drugs for me. I got drugs from other friends. So there's like a fucking like underground, underground network. <laughs> Truly, dealing. I got drugs from friends that had insurance, and they were like giving me sacks and needles and like hormones. Because you guys are both comics, do you not have insurance. This last or round we got insurance. insurance. So we were about, I'd say we we're probably about 80 to 85 out of pocket ourselves. Luckily, we had some very nice friends and mm -hmm. some family members mm -hmm. gift us about forty thousand dollars. It's I don't know why the dichotomy of like what's going on right now with abortion rights and how much like pro-life people care and about a baby's life. Yeah. <laughs> and then like how fucking difficult it is but to the have thing a baby. too is like with these laws though, depending on how the the term of fertilization this is what's also so scary is that so many people are depending on this to make families and when you're fertile when you have a fertilized embryo some people are considering that the person so they want to now put limits on how many eggs you can take out and how many things oh. so then they want to so then they want to not let you test your embryos and make you put in embryos because miscarriages are bad embryos they were there was nothing you've done wrong yes a bad a miscarriage is just an embryo it was not a viable Thing. If it did make it to pregnant, if you did give birth to a, 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 an embryo with the wrong number of chromosomes, a lot of times they don't live outside of your body. Mm -hmm. So they want to force women to um, do, uh, what is it called? A mercy, mercy and put their bad embryos in just to miscarry them because they think that that's more humane than discarding 
things that you cannot even fucking see with your eyes, with the naked eye. They think that that is a person. So it will, it could eventually. Also the trauma, it's insane. The, trauma the trauma of carrying that is I, like. I know. And they want to make women. And who knows how that could affect future births. That's the thing too. Once you have a miscarriage, you you have to, there's, there's certain cells and things that are still in there that could help, that could cause more miscarriage. So it's a really, and that's what you again, it's, it's traumatic to bleed out. Yes. It's traumatic. Yes. You're like, my body doesn't like this. This is not comfortable for anybody. No. I mean, talk about leaking. It's just like, it's not, it's not good. So, so that's what scares me is that it really could affect how people make their families if this transfers over, which it might, mm -hmm. which because essentially fertilization is a baby, then, mm -hmm. then your embryos are affected and then you're not allowed to keep as many. Like, because the whole thing is they think, you know, say you get five embryos and you do two and you have two babies and that's all you wanted. You have three embryos and you would just discard them or donate them to science or whatever. And then they're saying like, oh, that's also abortion. Mm -hmm. That's killing. Mm -hmm. And it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly oh, the whole thing is so mad, especially because like knowing how hard it is to make uh, if this is your only option to make a family and knowing that they could eventually stop people from being able to do that. It makes it so sad. Like I, I, I and it's, it's like, this is literally what you guys said you wanted was you, more, more people. life. Don't you want all the people, <laughs> which is crazy. I'm like, have you met people? I know. Horrible. They stink. Truly they stink. people stick. Yeah. <laughs> We've all been to times square. Yeah. <laughs> they stick. They suck. literally and figuratively. Yeah. They suck. Uh, How, when did you decide you wanted to try to get pregnant? It was Halloween. <laughs> I was what literally just up as Corella DeVille. <laughs> fully hammered just half the gray in my hair still and Robbie shot a load in me and I remember being like I'm a mom like it was like it was like I let science go out the window like I wanted to take a pregnancy test the next day uh -huh. you do not know <laughs> you do just because there's sperm in you you do not know so I I remember just being like oh my god how this old is were it. you were you guys married we were, yeah no we weren't married yet uh -huh. we got married at 38 uh-huh I think yeah we got married at 38 but so um that so Halloween I think I was 30 I must have been 36 mm -hmm. I think I was 36 mm-hmm yeah, and he shot a load. How long were like, you together? Ah! We'd already been together, I guess, like four years. And had he not like raw dogged like that? We'd raw dog. We just pulled out. Oh. You know, we just pulled. We just we did that. Yeah, we were pulling out. No birth control. No, I haven't been on birth control since I was twenty two because it was. I was like, there's no. These are too crazy. This is too wild. Because I was on it from like fifteen. Yeah. And then I was also on like antidepressants and ADD medicine, and yeah. I was like, you know, you see a Kodak commercial and you're bawling, and I was like, who can live like this? <laughs> Who can fucking live like this? You see so, a lawnmower commercial and you're like, don't hurt the grass. You were watching that commercial for like Mormons. Remember when they broke the window and he's like, sorry. And I'm like, I'm a Mormon. I was like, I can't live like this. So it's I stopped. It's a car commercial with the sunset. And you're like, it's beautiful. All of it. I was done. So I just, I truly and honestly, I, I, I just cold turkeyed my, like my ADD medicine, my antidepressants and birth control. I mean, talk about why. Talk about raw dogging life. Talk about exactly. I How did like, it change? Like How did it change your fix? emotions, <laughs> your weight, your overall well being? I was twenty two. I was I was on so much Coors Light. Like I really yeah. We Who I knows? think at one point we we had. I think at one point we went through a mint schnapps phase. Like nobody yeah. knows who they are. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't know if what I was feeling was What real. is in gold schnapps? What are those little gold things? It's flakes. It's, it's <laughs> should we be keeping them now? I mean, inflation. <laughs> we should be, we should have been mining them. <laughs> we should have, we, we really made mistakes with oh, the gold schnapps. We were schlager. just living life, not thinking about the consequences. Aftershock? Like why were we drinking things out of a wax <laughs> bottle? It was, it was disgusting. Yeah. So I have no idea. All I know is that I remember sitting in traffic one day and I LA and I was like ah! and I was crying and I was like no more meds no more meds and I got off birth control so I hadn't been on birth control for for yeah for over a decade a decade and a half so finally never gotten he pregnant. comes in you he comes in me on Halloween know. and this is like what 14 years after you were like I'm off birth control hope I don't get preggers I mean like I had taken plan b a few times mm -hmm. I had you know and it's just and it's really funny like there's never been even through all of that, I don't think I'd ever had like a late period. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think I'd ever really truly had a pregnancy scare. Like, I don't, I don't, I've never been pregnant. I, yeah. So. So then you, you aren't pregnant after Halloween. Not pregnant. And then are you like, let's, let's try. 
Yeah. So then we were kind of like, okay, we're doing this. We're doing this. And so we were just kind of doing it willy nilly and then nothing was happening. Like, you know, and, and that's also a very wild, cause then, cause then you're just kind of like living life and then you get your period and you're like, so sad. Yeah. It there's just, always like three weeks where you're like, I could be walking around pregnant. I remember and I don't know. on stage, I was at Gotham and I was like, the, after the Halloween one. And I was like, I could be pregnant right now. And it was like the first time I kind of started telling jokes about trying to get pregnant. Yeah. And I mean, the whole concept of people being like, we're trying is so funny. It's just to like me. looking at your friends being like, we're fucking. Yeah. Like, we are absolutely you're just fucking. fucking. I also, I thought I was pregnant this month. Did you? Because I, it's so, it's fun, so funny because after you get married, suddenly like, you're you like, you can't, you can't, the bloat. sex is pregnant now. You can't blow because everyone's just like, are you? pregnant and yeah. i'm bloated 98 percent of the time so it's been like weird for me i want to do a game show of like bloated or pregnant i know people I get it. offended people get offended by that shit but like people are like some people can't get pregnant and i'm like i possibly can't get pregnant i don't know but it's the second you're you're married everyone assumes you're yeah. like pregnant yeah but that's I, another reason to be open about talking about shit because then yeah. i get no questions because i'm <laughs> i get no questions because i'm always like i'm working on it i'm working on it okay leave no, me the fuck alone i just alone. got married a month ago yeah but can like I live you're like can we live our lives for just a little bit yeah and that's definitely what we want to do yeah but i'm very i take birth control but i'm notoriously bad about it yeah. i do i have bits about it it's i didn't take it to, like i just don't take i don't know how to take it because I, 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 i'm always traveling i don't have a good method i have adhd i don't fucking do it yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I mean i'm trying yeah and then i but so normally i make sure he doesn't do the deed like when i'm ovulating mm -hmm. but like let's be honest i don't i'm not like perfect with that either yeah and i think there was a moment where i was i he came and then i like was like I'm definitely ovulating right now. And Do then, you know when you're ovulating? I have the Flow app, but I okay. I don't update it that often. I'm just bad with that. If you have in when general. you have the clear stuff coming out, when you have the egg whites coming out, you're ovulating. Okay, I remember that that was like happening a lot this this month. Yeah, I remember being like, okay, aggressive. Um, yeah, the egg whites is that that's that's you're dropping eggs. So he, yeah, I remember being like, mm, and I didn't say anything to him, and then I. My boobs were throbbing. Mm -hmm. My boobs were throbbing. Oh yeah! If you think you're pregnant, you can make you can make the symptoms. <laughs> you're, you're, the symptoms will be there. If you're like I think I'm pregnant, you're <gasps> like my tits are so. <laughs> so my boobs, my boobs were like hurting so bad one day. Yeah, and I googled it, and they were like, "That's the sign." And then it was like, yeah. "Are you moody?" And I'm like, "Absolutely." Yeah. They're like, are you tired? And I'm like, "Absolutely." So tired. So tired. Oh my god! It, it's like. You but it's also the it. same signs for COVID. So I'm like, oh, I also have COVID. And then I asked my friend, I was like, I think I'm pregnant. And she's like, my friend said she was pregnant when she could smell her boogers. There is. <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 wait a second. And I was like, I start going. <laughs> I, okay, I don't think I can smell my boogers, but maybe my boogers don't have smell. Like long story short, no one knows what the fuck's going on. And two days ago, I like massively just got my period i yeah. also was pmsing like crazy yeah it's and funny. that's also the same thing it's it's through all the because i was things. googling i'm like do you pms when you're pregnant we literally had like the it's most the same we had the thing. most beautiful weekend together but there were like a lot of things we had to do and finally the last thing we were like we go up to a driveway to see some people and i turned to him and i go i don't want to be here <laughs> and he was like where is this coming from he's like you can drive home you don't have to be here and i'm like i didn't have to come you didn't even tell me i didn't have to come and he's like i didn't know you didn't want to come and he still makes because we're like in the hamptons like it's beautiful yeah, and he'll just yeah, look yeah. at me and be like i don't want to be here <laughs> like the most dramatic yeah. and then oh, i yeah. got there and i was like it was fine but long yeah. story short i fully thought i was pregnant yeah. i also yeah I'm just letting you guys know, like, the things that happen that no one talks about. I did joke about this, though, and I did post it on my Instagram. I took Plan B the, the next day after uh -huh. my wedding uh -huh. because I hadn't taken my birth control for, like, five days. Because wedding, I was, like, distracted by the wedding. 100%. And he came, and the next day I was um, spotting because I was off birth control for, like, six days. Yeah, yeah. That also so then, And then it was also, like, during ovulation. Uh-huh. So I just looked at him, like, do you want to have a baby? And he's like, I kind of want to travel for a bit. <laughs> So I was like, then take me to CVS. I like that you look down at your underwear and you look at him and you're like, are you ready to become a father? No, because I'm like, we're in this together, bitch. Are you going to wake up in the morning and take care of this baby? And he yeah. was like, I, he was like, no. And I'm like, then take me to CVS. Is it, do you want to have kids eventually though? So I was never the like, I want to be a mom when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I have this 
intense love for children and animals. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm around children, when I'm around animals, you feel you feel you feel something. I feel I I just I love it. Like I will hang out with kids over adults all the time. All day. And I I have such a like great relationship with my parents. I'm that I like want that you for want myself. That. Yeah, you but I also am like obsessed with my career. Yep. And I've never seen like a I don't see a lot of good examples, especially female comics. It's, like it's really so hard many to... great female comics mm -hmm. who don't have children. Mm -hmm. um, Ali Wong did, mm -hmm. but she just got a divorce, and it, it's just like there's, there's a lot. It's, not, it's hard to see that like effortless yeah. mm -hmm. um, have it all moment. Yeah. Um, but with but that's also another thing because yeah because we've been that's also I think something there there's not been many examples anyway for us not even with female comics like I said it's it's that thing that when you're younger they're like if you want a career you can't have a kid like it's been told to us and it's just like it's it's very hard to break out of that and do you know that feeling like when you're 16 and you're afraid that you're pregnant and the whole world seems like it's crashing down like how yeah. they make like the reality TV show, like 16 and pregnant, like yeah. you feel like if I'm pregnant, my life is over. Sometimes yeah. like you, that still stays with you for a little it bit. No, it's 100 percent. It stays where you just wait. get scared. Like this is the end. Like for 18 years now, like I'm a slave to yeah. um, being a mom. Yeah. And I even today on TikTok, this girl went viral just like sobbing, being like, I've never been more lonely. Like, make sure if you have a baby that like your husband actually like cares for you as a person yeah you have to like the person that you're doing it with but also it's like there has to be a switch like why is it that we like i i get that we have to breastfeed and we're the people but like there is no world that says that the mom isn't doesn't work and the dad stays home like yeah there's just there has to be some kind of something it's like somebody has to be willing to give up something but it's always assumed that it's gonna be us it's funny i think my husband is like wanting to wait a little because he knows that he's that gonna do gonna... most of the work yeah <laughs> he's like he's like like she's i not made home. it very clear <laughs> that i'm not a caretaker i made it very clear that i am yeah. sleeping in yeah he loves waking up in the morning like he's it's oh he's perfect 5 a.m so he this. know he goes i'm taking care of it so like i yeah. want to wait and yeah. i was like so but that was part of choosing a person for me knowing that like he's gonna be a very hands-on yeah. dad yeah because um, i'm not something playing that want. game no but so for you how you said this has like been a four year process. Yeah, almost five. October is five. How has years. this affected your relationship? Oh, quite. Uh, it's affected it to, in many different ways, just mm -hmm. because there is this thing where, like we were saying earlier, because I'm going through it, there's a level of seriousness that's just, it's just different. And, and, and he doesn't necessarily get all the parts of it that are important to me. Well, he's you also, know? he's not in your shoes. So he's it's not like in impossible. my shoes and he's, in, and, he, and, 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 and men are dumb. They just, they don't have the, 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 it's just different kind of things. Like sometimes if I say, they're like very logical. That's the thing. It's, it's, they're more logical. So I'll be like, Hey, Monday is our transfer date. There's nothing of like, Oh my God, I can't believe we're going to do it Monday. It's more like, okay, you've told me a date of something mm -hmm. like, and there's not like an emotion attached to it. And I have to remind him to be like, and I need you a little feel bit more. Like you're being needy, being like, Hey, I'm scared. No, I I'm just feel this. like, I feel, I feel like it, I'll be like, Oh, he doesn't like, it goes to, Oh, you don't care. Oh, you know, you don't care. We're just, just maybe the last day I ever won't be pregnant. Maybe the, you know, and, and he's like, I just heard that there's a date yes. and it's Monday. Like it, it becomes, they think about it very logically, like you said, as opposed to, and, and you ha I have had to remind Robbie many times to remember the emotional aspect of it. And it's and that's caused lots of fights. And that's but it's great that you, like you have a person in this. Yeah. But like I like to say, like no relationships are perfect because life isn't perfect. Your life doesn't just become this fairy tale. Like just now you just have someone next to you while life throws all its crazy no. ups and downs to you. No. Because also when even if you when you have a person though and you get thrown shit, like you guys me and Robbie handle things so differently that it's amazing that we're even able to live under the same roof together. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like we're mm -hmm. we're so well, well we're, you're dealing with we're massive trauma right now. So polar opposites and loss, which is something that I haven't processed yet. Do you Ooh. know what I mean? Like it's it's having transferred an embryo and not having it have worked, having done all these things, having um you know, you make all these eggs and you only get this. It, it's all like kind of this loss and and wow. a, and, a, and a weird sense of trauma that 
I didn't, I don't fully understand yet. Like this is again, like doing this show has helped me to kind of get into my own body a bit to be like, oh my God, I've gone through a lot in the last four years. Like yeah. it's been a, sh it's been a lot. How are you dealing with having empathy with yourself? Um, Cause that's my current work I'm doing with trying myself. Trying to be empathetic with yourself. Yeah, I, my actually our couples therapist just showed us this little have you seen it's like a it's like literally like a three minute Brene Brown thing about it's called like empathy, empathy versus sympathy have mm -hmm. you watched it no but I okay need to. she like literally made us watch it in therapy the other day and we were like okay got it. like this is <laughs> she's like made, take notes yeah yeah she was like did you because she told us about it. she's like did you guys watch it we're like we totally forgot and she's like here it is and yeah. she like showed it to us but it was a really interesting thing um about the difference between the two and and how empathy is just so much more caring and helps so much more than like sympathy. Um, so I really try to forgive myself because with this process, there's so, like I said, if you go on the internet, there's so much where it's like, don't eat this, don't do that, don't take a bath, don't paint your nails, don't die. Like there's so many things that you're not supposed don't to do. Don't be that, stressed about that it. Make you, you just fucking relax. Just relax. <laughs> Would you just relax? Be relaxed, you'll get pregnant. It's like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> fuck yourself so hard. Fuck yourself in front of a train track. Fuck yourself <laughs> on a train track. Don't tell me to relax because I will sew your sew your vagina together. I it's not okay. It's not okay. Don't say anything to anybody going through this process. Don't try to give them advice. Literally buy them a bottle of wine and be like, I don't know if you're drinking right now, but I'm sorry you're going through this. Mm -hmm. Buy them a bottle of wine, buy them a box of candy. That's it. Don't say anything. Saying forgive yourself is fucking powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You have to forgive. Like, so I will go and I'll and I'll do something or I'll be like, I'm not on this, you know, I'm not doing the Mediterranean diet and everything says you have to do the Mediterranean <laughs> diet before you transfer, but all I want to eat is hot tamales because I'm mm -hmm. not drinking and like, blah, like all Well, so when you're stressed, the only thing you want is hot tamales. You don't want to eat a fucking kale salad. I'm on a hot tamale kick, like nobody's business. Yeah. Like, I, that's all, it's all, it's all I want. It's Good all for I want. You. Um, so, but I've had to kind of, because I've had nights where I just sit up and I, I spiral, I spiral, I spiral. I go, God, if I really wanted a baby, why would I, why did I eat this? If I really wanted a baby, why did I do this? Like, oh my God, how come I can't, how come I can't uh, have enough self-control to not do this? The self I really want could just it, take it, over. It's so much. I've actually also started acupuncture and I think whatever she's doing is allowing me to be a little bit more gentle. Mm -hmm. Like whatever she's doing. I love that. Is allowing me to process, like to, to handle these things a lot more like calmly than the yeah. spiral because I really haven't had a bad spiral and, and I'm and I'm a week I'm, I'm less than a week away from a transfer and I really haven't and this is your second transfer this is the second transfer because the first one we had only had the one embryo it was last last summer and this this my doctor again is doing like something so different than I did last time so I'm really interested to see if this works and I feel like I'm in a different place How's now it making a difference so the first when generally when you transfer you have to take progesterone, whether that is, uh, because you, you need thick lining, your lining needs to be thick and your hormones need to be at a certain level for your body to want to accept, to make a healthy environment for the, Im for the embryo to implant and stick. Um, and so a lot of times you have to take things to help thicken it and to help your hormones. So like I was taking, um, six estrogen pills a day, four up my crotch, two in my mouth. I had an estrogen patch and I was also every taking, hole, <laughs> every, it was like, there were less drugs at Coachella. Like there are less drugs than what I was on at fucking Coachella. And then you take a progesterone and you shoot it in your butt. So you take progesterone and you literally give yourself shots in the butt. And then if you're pregnant, you do this for like weeks leading up. And then if you're pregnant, you continue it for like 10 weeks. And so that was like, it's like a huge thing. And then, and then if you're not pregnant, you just stop everything cold. Mm -hmm. Again, you just stop taking hormones, but he's doing more with my natural cycle. So he's doing kind of like an assisted natural cycle. So okay. he's waiting for me to ovulate. He's checking my levels. So I've, I've really only done, I did a, a light hormone. I did a light birth control. And then I'm, I'm on a, I did um, I, I triggered cause they were again waiting. They were like watching my natural eggs and he was like, okay. And, and he allowed my body, he told my body it was okay to ovulate. And now I'm on a light steroid and then I'll go in on Monday. I'll go in on Sunday for blood work and then I'll go in on Monday. And cause they were like, your lining was thickening enough on its own. And he's like, if we needed help, we'd give you something. Wow. But it was like, it was my natural cycle was doing enough on its own that they said we can go ahead and transfer it. So I've had to be on way less drugs this like like mm -hmm. almost no drugs mm -hmm. this time compared to 
legitimately I had a schedule that was, I was on like five different pills and you had to take certain things with food and some things you couldn't take with dairy and you had to take them exactly at this time. And the shots had to be between these three. Like it's, it's truly an insane process where you're like, you're so locked in so and much such, admin. I'm it's so much it. admin. And then you're also going to the doctors to check everything. And then once they implant it, it's nothing. And it's, it's just two weeks of you and yourself being like, yeah. Wow! Like, and like just, you're crazy. you feel like you're so responsible, but you're also so not responsible. I always grew I grew up with this kind of like, oh, if I succeed at things, I'm more lovable. Like yeah. and and so I would be going nuts with like, oh, I'm not successful in this. Am I not lovable? Which is like so not you, you gave those the value together yes oh man that's yeah. a tough one yeah that, <laughs> no that is a, that's tough. a tough one and that's why that's it, a really tough one i've gotten like good things happen from it but it's it's not a pleasant you know day to day yeah. sometimes no <laughs> no not at all that sounds miserable well, but it's great that you've been able to separate the two i've had to and i have better days and i have and i have not good days you know uh but this round, I've really tried to just been like, because because honestly, I follow people on the internet and, and I follow these things and you watch these people that do everything correctly and are still not successful. Mm -hmm. So it's like, because also on the internet, you can find whatever you want. If you can find a site that's like, eat nothing but McDonald's and you'll get pregnant. Like if that's what you want to find, you'll yeah. find it. You will find what you want on the internet. There's so, so many variables to these things. It, and everybody's different. Like I had a friend that literally was like, just don't do crack. She's like, just don't do drugs. And like, it'll be like, but you can't, you cannot control this. I mean, there are people do swear by certain things. Like, I don't know if you say like Heidi Montag was like chewing raw liver. Like she was eating literally like raw livers trying to get pregnant. Like she was just chewing bison hearts and raw livers and like putting this on Instagram and she got pregnant and she's like, was like, I was on an all meat diet. Like you don't know what it is, what is the combination but like somebody gets pregnant after doing this one thing and they're like this is what it is and you're like do I need to do that but it's mm -hmm. not it's not a one size fits all it's yeah. not a like you have to go home the only thing they, they do tell you to try to keep your belly warm they say try to keep your belly warm try not to do like you're literally start cooking your days. <laughs> it's also like the human body is 99 degrees like I'm on fire like I'm on fire but like they say to do like broths and soups and like not do like smoothies and stuff like that but again it's like who the fuck knows but they yeah. they're like if you keep your you want to keep your belly warm and this started That's like the only thing that has seemed to make sense this started from a combination of like you have some things going on and your husband's sperm might not be as yeah this just started from hey we're not getting pregnant and then we did IUIs which is like the step before IVF where they basically take the sperm and deliver it to the egg and say like just 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 get there and my husband's sperm were still like I'm okay <laughs> they wanted nothing <laughs> They were like, no, thank you. This is oh, this is so insightful to me because like, I, I don't know any of this. And it's crazy because I'm a 30 year old woman and no one has ever. We, we don't, we don't, we don't tell people. We and don't. I mean, we and I'm not asking because yeah. I've never, I've just has, haven't been in that situation. Yeah. yeah. So w what is your ultimate mindset for this embryo coming, but also just in general, like, Will, do you think you want to be a mom regardless of any situation or do you think you might one day just be like, you know, fuck it? Yeah, I've had that conversation, especially because like I said, at 40, it's kind of like there was a lot of pressure on these two last two egg retrievals because it's like I don't think if if none of these, I mean, God forbid, these five embryos, we have five chances right now. Mm -hmm. But if for some reason my body's not working with them. Because you can get a surrogate. There's that, which is also like so much money though. It's like $100,000 yeah. to pay somebody yeah. to be pregnant for you, um, which we just don't, that, that I don't even think that would be an option for us. But I've had to talk to myself and be like, I've seen like GoFundMes for like cats that have gotten like 40K. So I feel like I'll all right. push it on Bernie. All right. Now. <laughs> all right. I, I have more. I, I just, you know. just want to let you know. Like, we will like, do a GoFundMe. Okay. Okay. If, if I need a surrogate, I'm going to post a picture and be no, like. Someone posted like their cat broke their ankle and like and they got, got like, 35K. And I was like. I, but I truly think that we like pets more than we. <laughs> we like we don't need more people, but I'm saying, we don't need needs to live. So we don't need people. Like I would understand the abortion ban if women were getting pregnant with puppies they'd be like no we're keeping <gasps> we're keeping all the puppies but people yeah everyone yeah people everyone. yuck yuck um 
Uh, so, so I, I have had, I have had to look at myself in the mirror and be like, you're 40. If this is the last chance, like you probably aren't going to do another egg retrieval. Like if these don't work, what is, what's, what's your move kid? You know? And I've just had to, and, and there is part of me that's like, well, the world seems to be ending. So if I'm not bringing somebody else to, to, for the demise (laughs) and like, maybe I'm doing something nice, but, but ultimately I think I've had to kind of be like, I've had to stop that line of thinking to be like, I have five chances right now and I need to put all my positive energy into that. So I haven't even really done yes. the what comes after this. Well, you're living in the moment, which is really great. I ha- I have to. Are I you spiritual to. at all right now? I've been I've been doing I've been rubbing crystals and I, I pull I pull a card. Mm-hmm. I pull my tarot card like a tarot card what every are, day. What are the tarot saying? It's all been like very I've yet to pull a card that's like, this ain't for you yet. Everything I've pulled based on my questions so far has been like growth, new life, like all that, like there's been a lot of things that could be interpreted to like, to to new beginnings and new chances. And like, even I was just like running my show the other night and I was like, I'm worried about this. And the card was just like, stop judging yourself. And I was like, you motherfucker. It's crazy. You motherfucker. I saw a, uh, um, a psychic. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I'm seeing just like babies. And <gasps> then I saw an astrologer. Yeah. And she was like, okay, I'm just in the, she was like, I'm seeing it's either babies or like new career stuff. And she's like, you can probably like be in control of either. Yeah. But like yeah, that's yeah, what we're yeah. seeing. So that's why I got, and then my friend who's like very close to me yeah. is like, you're getting pregnant. And I'm like, I pers- I don't really, it's so funny. We're in such different situations yeah. where I'm scared yeah. shitless. I get it. But I also am like, low key, I'm like, if I get pregnant, like I get pregnant, like we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's, oh my God, this conversation has been so fucking powerful. One other question. Yeah. How have audiences responded? Uh, it's been really fun because I... Because the material, sometimes I have to bring it down to explain it. I'll look into the crowd and I and I I feel like people are really listening, but sometimes people will get up to go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, that guy. Did. I, I, didn't, I didn't have that guy. But I do feel like people are listening, which yeah. is really interesting. And I feel like I'm I, I, I'm talking about it differently than I've ever told jokes before. Um, and I get a lot of people that come, men and women, that will be like, we went through it. A lot of women will be like, I had my baby at 41, you're okay. Or like, I went through this and you'll be good. A lot of guys being like, me and my wife did it. And like, like so I get a lot of people just being like, I'm thinking about you and like you and like it's possible and like just kind of giving me words of affirmation or or just just saying I we went through it as well because on the New York stand up scene like fertility is not something that you're hearing about every night no and that's why I was also kind of like uh I made the choice to kind of go for it because I was like this feels when you hear the odds that it's one in eight people sometimes it's one like in some countries it's one in four like it's it's literally and I that say they have trouble it's it, it, going through fertility these are herpes odds like and we all know somebody with herpes or hbv mm-hmm. so it's like if it's the same odds I mean, you know you somebody HPV, going through it you're a loser you're a dumbass go no, get thank HPV, god they had fucking nerd thank god they had a vaccine my time around but um <laughs> because hbv also can affect your fertility <laughs> Yeah, be careful. But yes. but yeah, it was uh, so audiences. I can say sometimes sometimes I lose them. So I could tell that there's a couple people that maybe aren't into it. But my goal with the jokes is to even if you're not going through it, that you could still that the jokes are enough that it's still funny, even if you can't relate. And if you can yes. relate, it'll be double good. Yeah. And if you have no feelings to it, maybe and you'll learn even something. if for whatever. Re- <laughs> yes, you're going to learn maybe something. Learn something. Yeah. OK. We're okay. going to end with a final game. Okay. A speed round. Woo! Oh, okay. my God. I could okay. talk to you for hours. I actually have 400 more questions. <laughs> but um, and you guys definitely message me. Casey if I you will, have any truly questions. Truly and honestly, or, I'm here for anything. I'll tell you all the supplements. I'll, I'll tell you anything I did and you can do it if you want and you don't have to. Either. And if you're close to you Scotland or McDonald's. planning on going to Scotland, she is around all. All month. All month. I'll be at August. Just, just the Tonic at the Mash House. My show's at 5.05 p.m. Come see it. Amazing. Yes. <gasps> yes. A little pre-dinner fun. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh Before God. you get hammered, come talk about baby. <laughs> or, you know, have a little pre-dinner drink. Okay, it's time to play the seven deadly sins. Yes. Okay. What are you greedy about? Cheese. What kind of cheese? Pepper Jack. Oh, hell yeah. 
That was some white trash <laughs> shit. <laughs> that was some white trash. I heard it come out. And <laughs> Even though really you said, take it back. Well, are you from Boston originally? No, I'm from San Francisco. Oh, I am so sorry. That was insulting. I should not have said you're from Boston. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> San Francisco is so fucking cool. It's cool. I went to San Francisco twice to play yeah. Cobbs. And yeah, Cobbs is great. That bar next door to Cobbs was my high school bar. That was like where I was going since I was 16. Like, Yeah, I know exactly Laracas. what you're talking uh-huh. about. Yep. Um, And I love the seals. I am loving the seals. seals. Seals are staple. They are like. Lots of seals. Dog burritos. I oh, love yeah. them. Who are you envious of? Um, Chelsea Peretti. I love her career. <gasps> Tell me love why. Her career. She's amazing. I just think like she's just so funny. She's was, like then writ- wrote on a show, then had a role made for her. And now kind of I think can do whatever she wants. You know, I just think she's funny. But she wasn't like. She wasn't, she wasn't like, like handpicked super, by the industry. Super, yeah, she wasn't. Super, she super, really. I think she still like did pretty good industry wise, but she wasn't like super super. But she does like enough where her, her career just seems cool. And I also think she, yeah, she never seems to be doing something she doesn't want to do. She always seems to be herself. She just seems, yeah, and she just is really funny. What a badass. Yeah. What are you gluttonous about besides cheese? It's still cheese. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm gluttonous in a way that like. I don't let myself get full. Like, I know I'm supposed to wait, but like, if I want another something right then, it's going in my mouth. I agree. I'm the same way. I do not break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw my phone for that. Is done. What's your nationality? Uh, I am like Russian, German, fucking, I don't know, Irish. Yes. I'm a white mutt. Oh, wow. I'm a white mutt completely. Yeah. Yeah. We're similar. My dad is like that. Russian, Austrian, Polish, German, Jewish. And then my mom's Italian. (laughs) So I have a little pepperoni. Um, Pepperoni? (laughs) When was the last time you experienced extreme wrath or anger? Oh, to Robbie. When when he, (laughs) when I told him the date of our transfer and he said, okay. And I said, (laughs) no hugs, no tears, no recognition. Rage. <laughs> Rage. But what's so funny too is after you get angry at him, it's very hard for him to then just be like pleasant and excited for well, it. Well, can I tell you what happened is that we were like on our way to brunch. It got derailed. I fucking, I was like, see you later. I went and I went and I sat at this other place and I started eating brunch and then he met me and I had won the Hamilton lottery and we were supposed to go together and he's like, you know what, bring someone else because you're going to have fun with somebody else. And I was like... And I didn't bring anyone else. And I was like, and I was about to leave the house by myself. And I was like, I'm going by myself. And he's like, okay, well, I'll go with you. And then we got to Hamilton and we were both like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, can we just Hamilton brought us Wait, together? That is so funny. <laughs> when you fight while you're about to go to eat. To and then Hamilton. You, or, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I've done or the when like, fight, when you go about to go I, like I'm walking, yeah. like I'm about to go to lunch. You're going to fight and you're like, we can't sit together no, right now. I you go went, to separate places. I went to my own place. And then you wait and you're like, will he come? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he knows where I am. I was like, you know what? I'm hungry. I have the credit card. And then you are like, we should have just had lunch together because i <laughs> yeah and so and then i well he did he met me and then and then we and then yeah and then we were I can't sitting believe you're about to kick him out of hamilton we were like we were eating like he got his twizzlers and i got my peanut and, and when you win the lottery you're front row so we were like sitting in the front row being like this is kind of wild and then we were like okay let's have a good day like <laughs> hamilton made us feel better <laughs> so funny. okay when was the last time you were a sloth so just lazy all day oh my god sometime in the last couple of weeks I started Love Island season five and that really took That'll me do down it. for a couple of days. Wait, yeah. who's the stars of season five again? Tommy Fury and Molly May. That's the one. Ed that's Mora. the only one I watched. The Fanny Flutters. Yeah. yeah it's Mora, so it's Mora a really was good one. great. Mora was She's, so wild. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. When was the last time you let your ego or your pride get in the way of something? This is the hard one. Um, I feel like in comedy, it comes up pretty often where you check yourself or you see somebody get something and you're like, I feel like I'm funnier than them. And then you have to be like, Clearly, clearly there's something that they had in this moment when they got this thing that I didn't have. Yeah. So, but you have to check yourself. I feel like I have to check myself. I'll like look at a seller lineup and be like, they got in, they got in, they got in. And yeah. be like, and immediately be like, what the fuck is wrong? Yeah. Like, I'm funny. Yeah. And then I have to be like, that has them getting in has nothing to do with how funny I am. And also you assume like them getting something that you want means that their life is perfect. And it's like, well, <laughs> and then you yeah. realize like, oh, it's actually like my perspective is so fucked right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or like that same person is looking at you wanting something you have. It's that's the call with comedy. It's like, I have to know there's people that see my schedule and go would love that. And I'm seeing other people's would love that. And you just have to be like eyes on your own prize, eyes on your own paper. And then also that's also why I wrote the show. I was like, I need my own project. 
I need my own project. I don't want to compare myself. I need my own project. Well, you, I love it because you literally made it happen for yourself. I did it. And it was, it was, I, I needed, I needed something to throw my energy into instead of just like spots and comparing myself. I was like, what is something, what do I have? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this inactive womb. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The womb. The womb. I've got this empty, empty womb. Maybe I'll (laughs) fucking capitalize on that. And that's what we did. (laughs) It's also so wild to think of your life of like pregnant versus non-pregnant because mm. you go throughout so much of your life not even thinking about mm. that. And then also the concept of like, oh, if I have this thing, I'll be happy. Yeah. And I don't even know. I, I don't I I don't even know. And, and I, I, I've been trying to check myself to be like, it's not going to fulfill. I, I'm just I, I'm trying to take it as like it's the next phase. Yes. It's the next phase. So whatever that phase brings, but I would like to have the next phase. Yeah. You know, like as I haven't made the choice that this is how I'm going to live forever of of how I live right now, I would like another phase. I would like another something and I would like to be a mom. Yeah. And so like, I'm, I want to live in that world for a bit. So, you know, but like, and I say in my show too, my life, I don't feel like less than, I don't feel like my life has been Mm -hmm. not great because I don't have the kid yet. I'm just ready. Yep. I'm ready for it. Yep. For that change. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you lusted over someone? So I know we love Robbie. We let him go to Hamilton with us. But who's like your celebrity crush? Oh my God. Uh, who is my celebrity crush? Um, I feel like it just changes with what I'm watching. I'm like, <laughs> you know, you watch Love Island and you're like, God damn, 22 year olds are hot. <laughs> my God. My God, a 23 year old body is. <laughs> But they're so excuse me, so dumb, so stupid. They're so (laughs) squirrel brain, so stupid. And Um, then you're like, oh my god, I let men like that, like control my emotions. (laughs) Like that's scary. It's so crazy. (laughs) It's so crazy. But I feel like there's also like an older actor that I'm starting to find more. I mean, you know, I love a zaddy. I mean, it's like yeah, you turn forty and you're like, give me the gray hairs. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I'm trying to think who I even, I you know who. Dude, I don't even know. I don't even know what my latest celebrity crush is because it literally changes every time I watch a show. <laughs> it changes. I mean, I think we all like Chris Evans for sure. Yeah, and he recently came out being like, I'm so focused on trying I to find the one. You know, everyone's mom was DMing them that. Everybody. Everyone's mom was like, he's going to choose you. Go find him. <laughs> That's like when I was like younger and I was like convinced that Justin Timberlake and me were like, I was like, we have so much in common. Meanwhile, I was just in high school looking up all the things he liked and then just was like eating that and like listening to those music. Like literally I found his list of like favorite things and I was like, this is me now. I love that song too. Like so a, we're a thought we, for each other. thought we'd be together. My mom would like watch a basketball game and like find the like hot guy on the team and she'd send it to me and I'm like mom that man's a monster that man will be is cheating on me before I've even dated him before and it's hilarious that you think that that's just what happens you just go on the court and you say hi I like you we should be together (laughs) and that's how it happens (laughs) like she's acting like I'm lazy because I'm not like trying (laughs) to date the guy in the Knicks it's the same thing it's like it's the same (laughs) as like having getting a load shot and you being like this is it we did it that's all to wrap this up final question okay and this is so perfect for you. Okay. What advice would you give to people who are going through hell? How do you cope with those dark times? Mm. If you're going through hell, first off, welcome. And um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not so bad if you lean in. Um, <laughs> lean in. <laughs> lean in, baby. Like you are who you are, you know. Um, get, a, get a tan. Get a tan. Get some hot tamales. Mm-hmm. Um I, through every time I've had mental crisis, I found writing things down was super helpful because I couldn't express how I felt. And the only thing I could do is write things down. It happened when I I went through depression in high school. I started writing stuff with this infertility stuff. I started writing stuff, write, just, just, just jot a couple things down, write a couple things down, just try to get throw some energy to somewhere else outside of yourself and be vocal. Like you, again, like you don't have to, you don't have to be alone and chances are there's no way you are like, you're not alone. And, but so, so be vocal and see, see who's out there that might be able, that might be a few steps ahead of you that can help you that remembers what it was like where you were. Yeah. Express it. 
Express you know, yourself. Yeah, yes. and don't know what you don't know what energy will come back. You and don't who could know. Be there for you. You have to throw things out into the universe and see what boomerangs back, man. You must. Oh I'm obsessed. You are doing real good work out in these streets. Thank you. Um, normalizing it, speaking on it. I'm so excited to watch your journey in comedy and fertility and everything. You. Thank you. Where can people follow you, listen to you, watch you, give me the good, buy tickets? Yes. Um, I have uh, in my Instagram, I've got ticket links for upcoming shows. Uh, it's at Case Face B on Instagram. Um, I'm also going to have like when I get back from Scotland, I've got some gigs in like Boston and in Alaska and Boise and a couple other Alaska. things that I'll put Alaska. Um, let's it's in like November. I'm going to fucking freeze my dick off. But it'll be great. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I have uh, at Case Face B and Shady Shit comes out every Friday unless I don't put one out because sometimes I get also, tired. I did an episode, right? Yes. A while ago. Yes, you did. We definitely. talked about snapping, snapping on Summer House. It was a good one. Oh, my God. Yes. Definitely go and yes. listen to it. Yeah. And, and then we started talking about celebrities that were also in cults. That was another thing we went. Very on brand mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, I love when I look episode. at my former self and I'm like, you did good. <laughs> <laughs> you made some good decisions back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had fun. Thank you for coming to Thanks this. for having me. For, yes. And to this, you know, fertility. Yeah. Um, and truly my DMs are open. Like I'm. I am more than willing. It's never a weird question. And it's, I'm like, you can ask me literally anything and I will give you, I would tell you nothing is off limits. So we love, we yes. love that so much. Yes. Um, see you guys next time in hell. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>